Uh, I studied political science at Elphinstone College, and um, I'd often bunk my classes and uh, go visit um, the libraries and the galleries. So I'd just cross the road and go to Max Miller Bhavan Library, uh, where I uh, studied uh, uh, philosophy, psychology. I also started a little uh, film society uh, at the Max Miller Bhavan when I was in college. Um, and then, of course, there was the Jahangir Art Gallery uh, within the same Kalagoda area. Uh, the gallery scene at that time was uh, quite egalitarian. Uh, the galleries were at street level. So Jahangir Art Gallery was uh, like, a, like a Kunsthala. And uh, you would be looking at Tayyab or Sudhir Patwar, Tayyab Mehta or Sudhir Patwardhan's paintings. And next to you would be a bus conductor, um, somebody's driver, a student, a lawyer. So, I mean, this, this, this was the, the, the kind of you know, gallery ecology that, that I remember uh, from my student days. And then again, Pandol Art Gallery was also at street level, so people would walk in, office goers would walk into the gallery. Uh, you could uh, speak to Kali Pandol, who was again um, a very, very good presence. Uh, he never uh, imposed uh, his views on you. In fact, he always asked you, what did you think of the works? And then there was uh, Keku Gandhi and um, Kar uh, Karshit Gandhi. And Keku, of course, was always surrounded by public intellectuals, uh, in public intellectuals lawyers, um, activists, uh, people from the literary field, and so forth. And Kemal was just like a little, uh, you know, uh, I mean, a kidney-shaped gallery above um, Jahangir Art Gallery. And yet, uh, it had some, you know, iconic shows there. Um, yeah, and I mean, the gallery scene was not just uh, something that was restricted to the visual arts. So uh, you would have uh, poetry sessions, and not just in English, but also uh, in other languages like Gujarati, Marathi. So uh, in some ways, um, like Nelly Setna, I never walked the straight and narrow road. Uh, my life has been full of detours. and. Um, when I was at Elphinstone College, as I said, I started a film society with the Max Miller Bhavan. And um, I always wanted to go to film school and study at the Film and Television Institute in Pune. But my parents were dead against it, and uh, they wanted me to perhaps you know, uh, become a pathologist or uh, do something that they thought would be more worthwhile than the arts. So I decided that uh, uh, I would put my money where my mouth is, and I would be independent and earn my own money and go to film school. So that's how I uh, worked as the founding programs coordinator at Moe Crafts. Um, and um, it was there that I, actually, uh, I conceptualized and organized um, a national level symposium called Should the Crafts Survive? And uh, this uh, title, Should the Crafts Survive, was given to me by my, by my mentor, Shanta Gokhale because I was telling her about the dilemma that the craftspeople faced, which is that they, they couldn't continue with their, um, with, with their work if they did not have enough financial assistance. And therefore, uh, you know, of course, people uh, from their uh, members of their family would, uh, would work uh, in, in other fields. Um, and it's no use for us you know, middle, upper middle class people trying to project our nostalgia and romanticism uh, you know, onto their lives. So the question was, uh, should the craft survive at all? Uh, so that, that was the question, uh, you know, because after all, uh, what are we doing for the craftspeople to, to enable the craftspersons to be able to continue with their craft? And uh, the other question uh, that was embedded in the title was that if they survived, should the craft survive, then uh, what could be the measures that we could take in the future to uh, to produce the necessary infrastructure uh, that, would, that would help both the crafts and the crafts people to flourish. And uh, uh, Shanta Gokhale gave me this title, which was like a mantra. And she told me to write a small concept note. Of course, uh, I am never able to do anything small. <laughs> so even at that time, uh, although I was in my 20s, I wrote a position paper. And I called it the mother goddess on a bicycle, and such are the themes. Uh, and that was, again, based on my research. Uh, I wasn't just uh, interested in um, stylistic 
an, in a stylistic understanding of the crafts or just an aesthetic understanding of the crafts. And that's where my background in the humanities and political science um, helped me to understand uh, how we can bring in questions of art history and marry them with questions of human rights, you know, so, and questions of social justice. And um, therefore, um, uh, that, that uh, symposium had people like Prabhasha, Roshan Kalapesi, Jyotendra Jain. Jyotendra Jain and Rajiv Sethi got into a big fight on, uh, on, the, uh, you know, uh, on stage. So it was a, it was a, it was a very important symposium, uh, something that we normally did not have uh, in, in Bombay because these discussions were mainly, uh, you know, mainly took place in, in places like Delhi, for instance. And importantly, um, uh, I thought to it that the symposium would be organized by two craftspeople themselves, Guru Pachetti, who's, well, who's a well-known Kalamkari artist, and Satyanarayan Lalkaran, who's a well-known uh, Mithila artist. And they spoke about what could, what could be done for the future of the crafts. So uh, that's, that's my background. Um, I eventually went to film school I also made a documentary, uh, but then I was, I, uh, I was also invited to uh, edit uh, the, uh, the arts magazine, Art India. And then somehow um, I just concentrated on the visual arts and never went back to filmmaking. But my various experiences, whether it's in the field of, the, of crafts documentation, going into the interiors of Maharashtra, meeting people, learning about people's lives and their art forms, or my experience in filmmaking, all of these things have informed my understanding of art history. 